to another session of Office Hours online and folks here as well. So glad everybody made it today. I know it is, right now is what, contracting season, right? We're in the middle of submitting bids and putting in projects. So to get things started, I've got some surprises here for everybody. So I've got a surprise gift. And I got two awesome flashlights. <laughs> so, so I've got questions. And I'm gonna give it away. So, who submitted a bid in the last three months? All right, two people. All right, who submitted for the most amount? What was the largest amount that you submitted for? It was uh, 140. 140. How much of you was Andre? 500. I don't know. Okay, you get the first prize. <laughs> All right. Ready? All right, so here's the next question. <laughs> Who won a contract, a government contract in this last year, whether it is whether it's a dollar or two thousand or two million dollars in this last twelve months? Who's actually won a government contract? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's got, who's got, uh, who's made it the farthest in the five P's? Meaning you've gone through the first P is what? What is the first P? Preparation. Preparation. The second P is? Promotion. Promotion. The third P is? Oh, I just said that. Yep. Proposal. Proposal and performance. So in terms of getting your business, getting your infrastructure ready, who has, who has gone the farthest? Okay, where are you at? You're bidding, so you're you're registering, Sam. You registering, Sam? You got any certifications? You got certifications? Okay, awesome, awesome. And my prices, but I don't have any yet. Okay. I'm probably the newest, the newest, the baby. All right. Well, hey, hey, you get, you get a flashlight for effort, for effort. Okay. Oh, I know that. Okay. 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 Good. Good. Uh, you, sh you sh I'm gonna get you a flashlight for effort also. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, can you, can you get uh, one of those flashlights from the uh, office over there? You know what's that? Uh, I think we have some over here too. So. Well, wait, bring me one from over there, or anywhere is fine. Just bring me one. All right, so Andre, you get you get this nice gift here. So she get two gifts. She get two gifts. Oh, hey, wow. you know what? Uh, that, that's how that's how it works in the government market. The, if you learn how to win, you keep on winning. That, that's just how it works. So, so you want to open it up? Tell us what you got. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. That's that. That's for a business card. Oh, this is over. Card over? Yeah. Well, that's, that's nice. nice. That's cool. Thank you. All right. A, a for effort. A for effort. Oh, for the effort? Cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, coming to class, that's good effort. So. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, this is office hours. And you know, part of it, I'm going to encourage you guys to just come me out and, and give you a little trinkets, you know, just to have a little fun also. But but part of part of winning contract is just showing up. I had a I had a uh, good friend of mine. He he's working for a company, and he went to a they are an IT company, and he went to a G dot event. G dot does what? <laughs> Mainly infrastructure construction roads, right? So mainly GDA, they, they just do horizontal construction, and he's there, and the contracting officer is talking, talking about all the different projects that they have with roads and the plans for the future, all these different things. And so at the end, she talked about all these different projects, and she said, but what I need right now is I need an IT company, because we got an IT project that needs to be done right now. Any IT in the room, IT company in the room? He was the only one that raised his hand, and they got the contract. Wow. So, sometimes you just need to show up. 
Now, it may not always work that way, but how does that work? You may be the only company that submit a bid. And if you're the only company that submit a bid, in some situation, you're the, they, they just take yours and they say, hey, I guess if no one else bothered to submit a bid, we'll just take this one as long as you are priced competitively and, and you're responsive to the requirements, you might be the only company that bid and you win. And that's how it works sometimes. You showed up or you, you came in and you're in. So that's very real. That does happen from time to time. So keep that in mind. All right, so office hours is your time. So this is, uh, this is your time to ask questions. Why don't we go around the room, just say your name and your company quickly, just so that everybody feels that you start to get to know each other. At some point, you're gonna, I want you to connect with each other, speak the language to each other, and, and build a, a family, uh, a, a community of government contractors, and so, and so that you guys can you know, build a partnership in, in the government market. So you know, I want to use this time, quickly introduce yourself, going around the room. Uh, just your name and your company, and that's all we're doing tonight because we want to get to the questions. My name is Hafiza Abdulwali. My company is Isma Group LLC. All right, Isma Group LLC. Okay, next. Andrea George, uh, Prosperi Point Property Management. Um, okay. Owen Kajuji, Extrona Adventure, World Conference. Okay. Ron Taylor is Taylor Major Natural Services. Okay. All right. Great. So, who's got questions? I have a question. All right. Once you once you bid on a job, how long does you normally know take before you know if you want or not? When she said she did a bid, how do you? When will you find out if you want? They were ordered quotes, so they could turn around quickly. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Oh. I'm not waiting on that. Let's All right, so the question is, once you've submitted a, a bid, how long does it take to be awarded a contract, right? Yes, sir. The answer is, it all depends. Depends on many different things. I'll tell you the main key things. Depends on, the most important thing is depends on if they are already funded. Because if they have the money already, then it's going to be pretty quick. If they're putting out the project and there's a lag on the funding, like for example, when you know, you know, the president, this current president, when he took office, there was a lot of uncertainty about the budget, about his agenda, about his policies. And in that situation, a lot of the funds, budget was allocated, but the fund wasn't released. <laughs> Because he may cut some of those programs. Like, for example, uh, who got cut? EPA, right? EPA budget got cut. So there may be, oh, yeah, yeah, it really, it really happened. I mean, EPA's budget got cut. Whose budget went up? DOT, right? Department of Defense. Their budget went up. So it depends on who you're working with, which agency, uh, different policy change, different administration, new administration. They, they change their object, uh, objectives and budget can get held up. And so, so the budget is the most important reason of why a project can linger for a long time. The normal process is you, you submit a bid and it normally is awarded 15 to 30 days, maybe 45 days it's awarded. Mm -hmm. Then you normally have about 15 days to, get, to start the project or to, sum, to, sum, to send in the order if, there, it's, if it's a product. But it's unique to every single situation. Sometimes it could be submit a proposal today. Today is the 26th, and you start the project on October 1st. Mm -hmm. It could be like four or five days turnaround, and it depends on which agency, how big the project is. A bid is usually fast. A bid is usually lower dollar amount. So it's fast. They can award it very fast. And you'll start fast. If it's a proposal, proposals are usually longer. It takes about 30, 45 days to review the whole proposal, all the proposals that comes in. And, and you have more time to get started on the project. So it just depends. So the answer is it depends. Yeah. 
same part of the question. <laughs> would you know before you bid, like you said, if the money is funded or if the money, would you know that beforehand? I would say that generally 70, 80 percent of the time, if they're putting out a project, it's already funded. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry, is it funded? Mm -hmm. It, there are some situations where it may not be funded or it is funded, but it's been deallocated. Okay. And, but if they put out a bid, chances are they're going to award the contract. Yeah. You don't have to worry. <laughs> now, you know, I, I had a company that she put in a, a proposal and it took a year to award her. Wow. They just linger on, <laughs> linger on. But she eventually got it. And, and and did the work. So, all right. Next question. Um, when there's a disaster like you know all these floods, how do you? Uh, I'm told that you could be able to get like those uh, projects easily. They don't have to put up there. How do you? Okay. How do you put yourself in front of those uh, uh, opportunities. All right. So for disaster uh, relief work. Yeah. Relief projects. What is the normal way to get those contracts? All right. So, so good question. We are actually doing a full class on that. Okay. Not today. <laughs> In our next association meeting, okay. and which is Tuesday. No, not next week. Tuesday, the second Tuesday of every month, which is. The second Tuesday of every month will be the 10th, on October 10th. We are doing a full presentation on that. Okay. Uh, I will give you the short answer tonight, uh -huh. uh, but we will do a full presentation on that, disaster relief and contracting opportunities with disaster-related projects. So you can get ready for that there. Um, but let me... Yeah, so October 10th will be that class. But the short answer to that is this here. There's the FAR. What does the FAR stand for? F-A-R. What is the FAR? Right now it's far from all of your minds right now. <laughs> <laughs> Federal Acquisition Regulation. That is the contracting bible. So all of you for federal contracting law, contracting regulation is governed by the FAR. And at some point, you, you want to get familiar with the FAR. You don't have to read all of it because it's about 1,933 pages. Really? Yeah, so it's too, too big, too much to read. But you do want to read parts of the FAR, like FAR, FAR 19. FAR 19 talks about small business certification programs and you know the A Day program, the minority program, Hub Zone program, and how women certification program works. So you might want to read some parts of the FAR because it pertains to you as a small business. Now some of it you might you want to get familiar with. You don't have to read it. You can just get familiar with and use it as a reference when you need to look at it. Was FAR Federal F Acquisition Regulation, Regulation. and you just want to Google it. If you if you go to in the internet and just put F A R federal you know acquisition or something like that. So it is this here. And it is many, many pages. Don't try to print it out because you'll run out of ink. <laughs> but just go read, skim through it like this here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part three talks about, you know, see if you see anything interesting here. And, and it tells you how contracting officers should engage businesses and how business should engage the government. This is, this is the part.
Uh, so the answer to disaster relief projects, right? Mm -hmm. I brought up the FAR because of this here. Under normal regulations, the FAR has a standard practice or standard procedure of how a project is awarded to you as a business owner. But under disaster relief, it deviates from the FAR because they use supplemental clauses or they use agency specific regulations. They use emergency uh, funding regulations and in those type of situations does not go by the FAR. So the FEMA normally handles a lot of the emergency or some of the uh, disaster relief uh, funding and they're expecting for Houston about $150 billion of recovery uh, funding needed. Now, how much of that they get from the federal government, we don't know. Because right now they've approved a few billion dollars uh, and more funding is getting is being considered right now. The, the uh, build out for Florida, I think is estimated at about 50 to $60 billion for Florida. And that's because as bad as it was expected, it didn't hit as bad as what people anticipated to hit in Florida, which is good. Yeah. But Houston, it, it wasn't wind damage, but it was what? Water, Water damage Water. Flood damage. And, and flood damage. And with that there, uh, anything that gets flooded, it needs to be redone. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> so you gotta remove all the debris, you gotta do water treatment, uh, water remediation, and then you've got to, you know, mold treatment, and and then you you can rebuild and do renovation and so forth. So, but the disaster relief right now is being managed by this the mayor of Houston. So for Houston related project is managed by the office of the mayor. Uh, a lot of the funding is going to go from FEMA to the mayor of Houston, and then they're going to have a team that's going to manage how some of the work is done. So a lot of contractors kind of is going to come through the city of Houston itself. Some of it will come directly from FEMA. For example, uh, I looked at it and they needed a million can of food. I forget if, I think it was fruit. Like, um, you know how they, they had to have the mixed fruit okay. in the can yeah. that you just open it up? Yeah, yeah, the Monte. Fruit cocktail. Yeah, fruit cocktail, yeah, that's what it was. They needed a million can of that. It was a disaster related need. And, and they need many other things, but that's, that was the largest quantity that they needed. And it really stood out. I said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had a company that distributed that, mm -hmm. Would you have been able to like? Uh... You could have, yes, you could have. And that project, it was like a two-day turnaround. Mm -hmm. So you you have to see it and bid on it mm -hmm. <laughs> in two days. Now, if you see a project that's available and it's and you have to bid on it in two days, what does that tell you? They're gonna pay. They're gonna pay out. Yes, they're gonna pay, but what else? But that's not the real big big kicker <clears throat> that you have to be aware of. You what? Deliver quickly. No. Obviously, you have to deliver quickly because <laughs> it's emergency need. But if it's a project and you only have two days to, re it shows out today and it's due in two days. The first thing it should tell you is that they already, they already have a company in mind that they want to use. So don't be tricked by those projects, okay? Don't spend 48 hours staying up trying to get ready for that project. Typically, if it's a legitimate project, you should have about at least seven days to put together a response to it. If you don't have seven days, they already have a company in mind, and they put it out quickly like that with a short period of time. Because so that, that's the company that can. Yeah, I mean, how, how are you going to source out a million, a million cans of you know cocktail? Yeah. You have to you have to call the you have to call the manufacturer and say hey do you have a million if I need it because <laughs> you all these things have to be put in place you can't just tell them yes I can deliver and you have to talk to the manufacturer to make sure that they have a million cans sitting in the warehouse that can go in five days ten days or whatever the time frame does that make sense yeah, yeah. short time now 
the the way you find out is this here. You call the contracting officer and you ask him or her, can you extend the due date? If they say yes, that means they're really looking for competitors. If they say no, that means they already got a company in mind. And it's just a formality that they have to put it out for bid. So for so the two main ways or the two main agencies you look at is for disaster. yeah for disaster you look at Houston city of Houston and you look at FEMA. Just Google FEMA, that's it. And uh, no, you go to FBO. Let me. In fact, I'll show you quickly here. Okay. FBO. What about you go, Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico? Uh, no. They they're they're not gonna get funding. Puerto wow. Rico is a Commonwealth of the U.S. And what what is our president doing the last few days? Tweet. <laughs> tweeting about what? Football. Yeah, about football. Yeah, football. So, so he's, he's not tweeting about the disaster yeah, in Puerto it. Rico, yeah. what kind of response we're doing, what we're doing to, you know. And so, and so they're going to get some funding, but not, not the same as Houston and, and Florida and so forth. Puerto Rico had a referendum, and the their, their I guess, the, the governor and all the people said that they, they chose to become a state of the United States and not a commonwealth. So they, they, they voted and everybody said, we want to be part of the United States and the 51st state. That's what they went through. This is a few years ago. But the U.S. and Congress had never took that up to say, we want them to be another state. So, so, so that's what it is. FBO.gov. Yes. And so once you're here, you want to click on advanced search here. Click on this advanced search form right here. You see it? Yeah, I see. Click on that. And then you want to come, and you can leave it open for now because we want to see Houston, Florida, and Puerto Rico, and all over, yeah. all FEMA projects right now. But what you want to do is you want to drive this here by the agency. So if you come down here to where it says agency, and then click on specific agency. Can you see that? Click on specific agency, and you type in the agency name here. So don't type in the acronym. Type in the full name, Federal Emergency Management Agency. So I'm going to choose this agency here, and then I'm going to just search. Or put you in your next code. The next thing is put in your next code. Yeah. The industry that you want to focus on. So, what industry you, are you are you want to focus on? Uh, let's say flooring. Flooring. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just put in construction in general because yeah. flooring, yeah, yeah will fall under construction. Under construction. Yeah, construction. So I'm gonna put in two three six. Everything two three six. The three digits only. So I'm gonna put. 236, which includes all constructions, all, all horizontal construction. Hey, operator, welcome back. Thank you. Once you get back from, from California. Is it right? Yes, that's the right side. Where did you go? Advanced search. Right there. Then I'm going to hit on search. That's it. So now you can narrow down to state and all that stuff, but I'm going to do agency and next code. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to hit search. And it's going to tell me all the projects. Oh, what did I do? Let me clear search again. It only gave me. All right, so I'm going to do, go to specific, federal emergency management. Let me check all this here because I'm not sure why. Two, 
236228. All right, I'm going to go in here, renovation. Put in here flooring. Flooring contractor. And carpet. Put a few keywords here. Carpet, rug mill, carpet, poster cleaning service. A few things. And then I selected 10. This is just an example. So, and then I want to see what shows up. So hopefully you can get more than seven. Eight, that's it? Hmm. Carpet, like all this is old here. Yeah. So, I'm not sure why there's not more showing up here. Well, let's do this here. Let's. I'm just exploring, it's like an advanced search for, and that pulls a lot more. Yeah, yeah, but did you do by FEMA only? No, I didn't do it by FEMA. Well, did it once by disaster recovery because it was labeled, labeled that way. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so let me check all of this here also. See if that matters. Okay. Let's see if that made a change. A little bit more, but not that much more because all of it is still older stuff. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it open. I'm gonna remove FEMA. Let me clear the search. Let me just do uh, sometimes you can do it by a specific agency, it will tell you, but I'm just going to do by keyword disaster. So you can do a few search a few different ways and, and see what hits better. And so this one, I'm just going to do put in the keyword search of disaster and see what is showing up. Shoot, 1600 okay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you didn't specify these. I didn't. I just want to kind of see oh, okay. what, what, because I was looking at it, it was too, too narrow. Yeah. So, ear monitor lap, after G renovation, funeral homes, yeah. services. Yeah, I guess there's a few deaths, so. <laughs> Request for information, <laughs> direct lease properties, Cisco phones from construct, lecture capture, country represented, oil, coal units, wire arm, guard services, scanner, and so forth, tent rental, ready senior workshop. Food supply it, it for has Houston. Some stuff under like repair. So under repair, you may get like what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Like they will include some for yeah. uh, or whatever. Then.
Yeah, but but glance through this here to see what's in here, what might be a good fit, right? So, but this is under the keyword disaster. You can use different keywords. You can do um, NAICS code without the word without the agency FEMA. Okay. There's many different ways to do this here. So, I'm trying to see if there's anything close to what we're looking for. They're looking for a lot of tents. I've seen tents a few times in here. <clears throat> Disaster early garbage refuse collection. Mobile laundry services. You guys can do laundry services, right? One of those things as well, they, they will not let our towns do it. It's only for the locals. Like, don't let yeah. for residents or whatever. Yeah, so in that situation, what do you do? Don't bid on it? Right. No. That's not they the tell you that. I saw one last That's week. not the answer. No, you, you have to Are you trying to use partner? Yes. Yes, you, you partner with a local company. Yeah. You supply the manpower. You supply everything. They bid on the contract. Under. And you, you share in the reward. They make money, you make money, right? Who does the bidding? You, I do the bidding? They bid as the prime, you bid as a sub, or as a team partner. But what if they're not registered under this? You register. You still have to be registered, but you're using your team partner's company to be the prime, and you're the sub. Like this project here, right? Says um, company must have a Florida address and so forth. And in this situation, you team up with a company based in Florida. And if you need a company based in Florida, I can show you how to do that. And that's not too hard. So basically what you're saying is that uh, a company will want to partner with us just because we are we have access to this information and they don't. Well they don't know how to do government contracting work. I mean they're a successful company, but they're in the commercial market. Okay. There's only less than two percent of the companies are registered in SAM. Only half of one percent are winning government contracts. Okay. So 98% of companies are not even registered in SAM. So they don't know how to go after gummy contracts. So, and um, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you want to go with your question? Go ahead. And, um, okay, let's say that they say, yeah, well, let's do it. Um, how do you determine what is more important and what percentage goes to it? Usually the prime does 51% and the sub does 49%. Okay. Yeah. Or they sh they sh they get fifty one percent of the profit. You get forty nine percent of the of the profit. So there's a few ways of how you structure. But generally, the revenue should show fifty one percent to them, forty nine percent to you. That's generally how agencies want to look at it. And your job as a sub is making sure that the job is going to be done, or it, just to manage the it, contract. It depends on. Like in your situation, because you're in the language service. Uh -huh. Right now, in the federal regulation says that any agency, state and local agencies that receives federal funding, uh -huh. they must provide the services in the language that the person can understand. Yes. So that's the regulation for language services, right? Yes. It's not applied for language services. That means that they need language services company. Mm -hmm. So hospital, they receive federal funding. They have to provide medical services in the language that the person can understand. Uh, driver's license, any of these different places receives federal funding, they must provide the services in the language that the people can understand. Mm -hmm. Federal disaster relief, in, especially like in Cuba, I mean not Cuba, but in Miami and so forth, high population of Cuban down there, they speak Spanish. All around many parts of Florida, 
they have to provide services in the language that the people can understand. So they need your, your company down there. That's, mm -hmm. that's a good example of how you apply your skills down there. You reach out to the language service company down there that's not actively searching for disaster relief, but they're based down there and you can bid on projects if it requires that the company is based in Florida. So that's how you go about it. Cool. My question is, mm -hmm. if I'm, if I'm uh, a company who's registered in the federal, as a federal vendor, and I want to partner with a company who can do the work, and let's say they live in Florida, but they're not reg registered as a, a vendor, a federal vendor, how does that work? Because the company that you want to team with is not okay. registered? Yeah. How long does it take to get registered? As far as in Sam? Oh. No. Three hours? Three hours? Yeah. Okay. Now it may take seven days to get approved, but it takes seven hours, you know, three, four, five hours to get ready. Oh. So it's not too long. Now the approved the system might take about three to ten days to for the company to show up, but the registration process takes about if you're sitting in front of your computer and you're just filling out everything, it probably takes about three hours or less. So So what if there's something you have to bid on and it's like you get seven days to bid on it? Then you don't bid on it. That's why you guys are in class, right? So that you're not chasing your well prepared. And, and, and that's why I suggest that you're building relationships. You're, you never know when you, need, you will need a company in Florida to team up with. You never know when you'll need a company somewhere else to team up with. So anytime you meet somebody who's in the government space, remember we talked about the relationship triangle? Mm -hmm. You need small businesses. You need large companies. You need your government department, mm -hmm. someone who can write proposals, who can you know, do relationship marketing, all kinds of different things. And so if you meet someone, you plug them into those circles. You need agencies, you need small business you know, advocates, you also need contracting officer as part of all the relationships you need. So you're always building these relationships, whether, it's, whether you need them now, you might need them in the future, it doesn't matter. Build that relationship, cre create your dream 100 list, because at some point you're going to say, oh, yeah, 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 I'm, I met this company, or I need to reach out to this company. All right, qu other questions? Okay. So, so I can't get into FEMA in details because uh, it's a long answer, but, but we will do that training yeah. on October 10th. Okay. All right, next question. I have a question. So mm -hmm. what is the best thing, like I just registered my company, so what is the next best thing for me to do? You just register with her. And Sam? No. Um, oh, you just register with the Secretary, Secretary of State. State. Okay. That's the first thing. That's good. Because you've been coming for a little bit and you, you've, you've got your company going. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the first thing, right? Take that big step out there and get your company started. Yeah. So, so any, any suggestions for her visa? She got her company registered with the Secretary of State. What's the next thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't know if that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning to, huh? plan to incorporate? Not right now, I'm an LLC. You are an LLC? Mm -hmm. So you are already limited ability for now. Okay. Look for business here. That's, that, would, that would be my, my best bet. Yeah. Very good answer. I like your answer too. Let me summarize their answers for you. Omar, right? Owen, yeah. Owen. Owen's answer is the summary of it is build your business infrastructure. You need your website, you need business cards, you need marketing collateral, you need capability statements, you need all these different things. So that's part of your business infrastructure. So you got to put those things in place. And many other things tied to business infrastructure. 
don't get an office because you can have a home office from now. And, and so there's some things that you don't need. Don't don't go and get a nice folder with a stair step brochure that goes into you know, and it has a little clip where you can put your business card in. Don't spend all kinds of money. You need a brochure and you need a business card. You, you need a capability statement. That's about the marketing collateral you need right now. You need a website, basic things like that. The what Alfredo said is just as important, maybe even more important, the infrastructure. You just need to make your first dollar, get revenue, get your first client. So so what's the industry you in? Education. It's it's actually it's, it's dealing with the youth. Okay. You know, uh, All right. Good. I, yeah. So it's education, different. youth, and so forth. So so you have to test your business model, and you go out there and you talk to you you take out your cell phone. Okay. You got your cell phone with you. Mm -hmm. Take out your cell phone and and go through this exercise with me. All right, so you, I'll just do it for you. I click on my phone, and I go to my contacts, and you know all these contacts in my phone. Uh -huh. I've got over a thousand contacts in here. These are people that I know or have called me or I've talked to at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. That's why they're in, in this system, in, in here. So don't talk to a stranger. Talk to someone you already know who is a friend, a family, or someone who's an acquaintance or, or an associate at some point in your, in your life. And you just go down the list and you say, hey, I have a tutoring service and I want to reach out to you because you're my friend, I respect you, and I want to see if you know anyone who needs tutoring services. And you ask for referrals. That's it. That's how you get your first client. <laughs> and if people are willing to Give you and just tell right now I am you know I am doing a fifty percent discount on my services and you start off with that to get your first dollar. Now I'll give you two examples of how I started two businesses and I start with the Government Contractors Association because that's what you guys you guys know this you're here. I was doing consulting work. And I said, you know, I want to start an association to help small businesses. So before there was an association, before I even incorporated, I went on to LinkedIn and I said, I set up my website and I went on to LinkedIn and just started connecting with people. I said, hey, just want to let the world know I'm starting an association. Somebody found me in Alabama. They went to the website, paid to become a member. I never even talked to them. Because they saw, they saw, they found me somewhere on LinkedIn and paid to become a member. That's how I got the first member of the association. <laughs> Pay, I think it was $2.99 at that time. Or maybe it was $3.99, but they paid to be a member of the association and I didn't even talk to them. They said, oh, association, I'll join and pay. To this day, I've never met that person. Called them a few times. They never used the services, never used anything. <laughs> it was just an association. They joined. That was it. So there's people out there, but you have your warm list already, which is on your phone. And, and you, you don't sell your warm list. You ask for them to help you. But you don't say, can you help me? Because that's too overt, right? I mean, it depends on your style. I mean, if you're direct like that, you can tell them, hey, hey, you know what, we've been, we've been friends for a long time, help me get my business started. And you can just be real like that. But the nice way to go about it is, hey, you know what, I just started my touring business, and I'm wondering to see if you have, you can refer someone that you know that may be interested. Do you know someone with kids? Do you know someone with, with teenagers that's having trouble in school? You ask them something specific like that, and they say, oh, yeah. All my cousins got issues in school. <laughs> Let me give you the mom's number, right? And, and that's how it starts. 
So revenue should be the highest priority, not revenue in the government market because that takes too long. Mm -hmm. That takes months and months of building infrastructure. But revenue from, you know, in your service, it's, it's easy to get to. The second business, another business that um, when I started, it was a office furniture company. And so at that time, business is about finding someone to have a problem and finding a solution for it, right? That's what business is about. It's about people and their problems, and you find a solution for people's problems. That's what business is about. Business is not about product. Business is not about service. Business is not about money. Business is about problems and solutions. That's all, that's, that's all it's about. So I called up a few people, and I said, hey, do you need furniture? Do you need furniture? Do you need furniture? And this, you know, one guy said, oh, yeah, yeah, I need lateral files. And if you can find lateral files, I'll take as many as you can find. Well, lateral files are usually expensive. They're usually anywhere from eight hundred to three, four thousand dollars for each file, depending on the quality and the brand. So I said, okay, I found someone who had a problem. Then I went to the yellow pages, because back then there wasn't Google. So I went to the yellow pages and I just started calling office furniture companies starting with A, right? Because back then, on, on the yellow pages, it starts with A, and it goes all the way to Z. Everybody's company wanted to start with A because you get listed first. Back then, it was that way. So I just started calling, and I got to Architectural Installations of Atlanta. They're an installation company. They do office furniture installations. And I talked to this guy named Bradley and said, hey, Bradley, do you have any lot of files that you want to let go for a good price. He said, man, I got a whole rack of them. Wow. They just take your space in my warehouse. So if you can come and take it, just give me a fair price. Uh -huh. So I went there, I looked at the furniture, I found someone who had a problem, and I found someone who had a solution. Now, I, didn't, I only had $300 to my name. I used a hundred dollars to start my company like you did. So, you know, you know, and I use a few dollars to get a business card and then a few different things. So, so I'm down to almost no money left. So I had to be smart in terms of how I build my business. So the guy says, come and look at it. So I went to look at it. I called the other guy because back then there wasn't cell phone. So I used, I used his call, his phone to call the other guy and say, Hey, Hey, I've got some files here. Uh, are you interested? The guy said, well, tell me the brand, tell me the model. I told him to say, he said, okay, hey, I'll take it. And the guy said, I will, I'll pay $4,000 for, for the files that they have there. And then I marked it up $500. And I told the guy, I said, hey, we will pay you, um, we will pay you 4000 but 500 is going to come from the you know, well, 4,500, I negotiate 45. 500 is going to come to me for my broker fee, and 4,000 4, is going to go to you. And the guy said, done deal. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how I made my first $500 in, in, in furniture. So wow. when you did that, the person who bought the files paid 4,500, and then the, the dealer who you dealt with gave you back the 500 Yeah, yeah. And, and they both know that I, I need to make money. They understand that this is business. Mm -hmm. So he said he was willing to pay four thousand. I said, okay, you know, I need to make some money. So he paid forty five hundred, and then the other guy got four thousand out of it. But you just got to get to revenue. That's that's Alfredo's point. Mm -hmm. You're not a business if you're not making money, right? Mm -hmm. And if if and you may be a business, but if you're not making money, you will be out of business very quick. <laughs> so you got to get to revenue quick. All right, next question. Next question. Other questions? So what certification should I apply for? Don't worry about certifications. Oh. Get to revenue. Get to revenue first. Now, if you do want to get a certification, the women-owned certification should be the first certification for you in your situation. For other people, it may be a different certification. But in your situation, either the WSB or EDWSB, depending on the NAICS code that you have. So 
so it just depends which certification type is uh, should I get first? Now, Ronnie, what, what do you think is your first certification? The first one I was going to, well, I know it's two small business, okay. small business and minority business. <clears throat> Our partner goes to minority business with first. Okay, that's good. I like that idea. If you are focused on the, if you want to get work with large companies that are in the commercial market, your MBE, mm -hmm. which is your minority business enterprise certification, might be a very good first one. Mm -hmm. If you're already active in the commercial market, Commercial is usually easier to get to revenue. Now, it may not be the largest revenue you're going to get because I, I believe there's more money in the federal government market than there is in the commercial market. But that's just my opinion. Some some business is will always be better in the commercial than it is in the in the government market. But nonetheless, in your situation, the MBE may be the best certification for you. Owen, what do you think? Which certification is best for you? For me. The small business, there are many small business certifications. Um, which one? To be honest, I don't know which one. Okay, so there's 8A. Have, well, the 8A will be the best. I think 8A is the best. Be the best. That's, usually not, that's usually not the first one, though. Yeah. So the question is, which the one is first? So, so yeah, so Minority Business Enterprise, MBE, which is a commercial certification also. Yeah. So it may be MBE for you also. But I believe for you, the the if you're doing federal work, the WSB or EDWSB is the best. The e EDWSB, oh. economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business certification. Andrea, which one do you have right now? WSB. WSB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're doing a federal work. WSB or ED, if you do commercial work, then WBE or MBE. So for government contracting is which one? Federal work for you is 8A or Hub Zone. That's for federal work. You're not a veteran, I assume. Yes. So those are the two best federal for you. 8A and, 8A and Hub Zone. For state is DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. For city is city of Atlanta is usually the best one since we, we, we live here in Atlanta. If you're in, if you're in, you know, Illinois, Chicago, city of Chicago. If you're in, in Texas, Houston, or San Antonio, or or uh, any of those certification there. Yeah, Fulton County. If you want to do county work, Fulton County. You might want to do DeKalb County. You might want to do Clayton County. Both they have certifications depending on where you want to focus on. There's so many certifications, you cannot do all of it. No, not so, that price yeah. <laughs> yeah, so don't do all of it. Just start off with two or three uh -huh. is a good place to start. But you know, I guess start with one. Mm -hmm. Get it going and then get two or three. Two or three is enough to, to get going. All right, so we got time for one more question. Last question. It matters. It, it depends on which agency you you wanted to work with. Yeah. That's why I didn't know what certain cases apply to. But it doesn't limit you to be to submit a proposal, right? It does not. If it if if it's not set aside. If it is set aside, then if they set aside to better own and you're not a veteran. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That you can bid on it, you have to team up with the veteran to bid on it. Yeah. And it also depends on which agency. Yeah. If you want to do work for the CDC, which certifications do they like to use? 8A. 8A. They like to use the 8A. Oh, okay. If you want to do work for the VA, they like to use the Service Disabled Veteran Owned or VOSB, the Veteran Owned Small Business Certification Program. If you want to do work, for you know, city of Atlanta, you need to get their AABE or the APABE or HABE for you in your situation. What does AABE stand for? 
Andrea, you know that. African American. No? no. African American Business Enterprise. What is HABE? Hispanic. Hispanic American <laughs> Business Enterprise. So that's for the city of Atlanta. Fulton County is? TBE. For, no, Fulton oh, County? MFBE. Yeah. MFBE. Yeah. The Minority Slash Female Business Enterprise. That's the one they have. Right. Um, Marta? Marta is a city, right? Nope. The state. Marta? Marta is the train. It's under DOT. Yeah. And they use the DBE. But they have their own version of the DBE because there's the state DBE. Yeah. So when you get the, when you, that, you know, that's my question. When you get the DBE on the state, do you yeah. still need to get the DBE if the county requires? County does not use the DBE. So the county, Fulton County, use the MBE for you. MBE. MBE, Minority Business Enterprise. Okay. Now, there's different types of MBE also. Okay. So, so let me type it up, and then we'll end up with this here. All right, <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. I applied, I applied for uh, <laughs> County, and, I, and I'm almost positive that we get a DBE certification with them. No, Fulton <laughs> County is not DBE. <laughs> so I, I get an MBE. Fulton County is MBE. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 8A, Hub Zone, uh, SDVOSB, slash VOSB, AD slash WOSB, Section 3. So these are the top federal certifications here. Top federal certifications. State, statewide. Certification, state certification is DBE. Some states have the SWOOC or the HUB. For example, SWOOC stands for Statewide Uniform Certification, and Texas uses that, and in North Carolina uses a version of that. That one of it is called the hub certification. It's not the same as the federal hub zone certification. It's its own hub certification. Hub stands for historically underutilized businesses. So that's the state. At the county certifications, now state. They also have the SWAM. This is for Virginia. Uh, this is for Texas and North Carolina. Okay. So SWAM stands for Andre. What does it stand for? I don't know what it stands for. I can't remember. That was huge. Like... Single woman. What? Okay. You're close. You're, you're close. Single woman and looking for a man, right? <laughs> so SWAM stands for Small Woman and Minority. It is for Virginia, the state of Virginia. So most states use the DB. Georgia used the DB, but a few states have their own uh, certification that encompasses the DBE. So, counties, Fulton, so Fulton has the uh, M slash FBE. Most, most county have a minority or female business certification. Cities, for example, Atlanta. <coughs> they have the AABE, HABE, FBE, 
They have the APABE. <laughs> SBE. So Sierra Leone has multiple. Yeah, right. Small business enterprise, female business enterprise, mm -hmm. Hispanic, yep. business yeah, enterprise, yep. and American, African American, African -American. business. Yeah. What's APAB? Um, uh, Asian? Asian or Pacific Islander? Asian Pacific American Business Enterprise. Pacific, okay. Yeah, Pacific, including Pacific Island, that's what I mean by that. So Asian Pacific American Business Enterprise. So Clayton, Clayton has the SLBE, the CAP has the LSBE, Marta has the DBE, but their version. And then airport airport Atlanta Airport has A C D B E. What does A C B A C D B stand for? Anybody? You know what D B E stands for? What does DBE stand for? Business BE stands for business price. What's DBE? Disadvantage. Disadvantage price. Now what is AC? Airport concessionary disadvantage business enterprise. Airport concessionary? Yeah. So if you want to sell food, if you want to do anything in there and at the airport, you need ACDBE. But does the airport contract work out? Do they have their, do they, do they have their own employees? No, a lot of his contract out. Contract yeah. out. I mean, they have their own employees too, mm -hmm. but a lot of his contract out too. Yeah. So SLB stands for single. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Contracting. You're thinking like you're 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 thinking match.com here. <laughs> What is S stands for? Small. Small. L is local. Oh, small. Business local enterprise. Business. And the cap is local, local, local small, small business, business enterprise. So they reverse. Yeah. Change it around. Yeah. So it just all depends. So, mm -hmm. so, so keep in mind now, if you're want to do work like in LA, right? LA, uh, city of Los Angeles. Uh, certification program so if you so I only gave you example of local here for us but if you want to do work for LA you can come in here and you can go and and type in Los Angeles green business certification they get all kinds of different certification right and then if you can't find something specific you can put in minority contracting with the city, certification program. And so most major cities that have an urban community will have a minority or female business uh, program. <coughs> so for city of Los Angeles, they have the DBE. Uh, the airport uses the ACDBE, the wow. MBE here, woman BE, SLBE. They have Yep. So it just depends on which agency you want to do work with, research which one they they have, and they apply for those. All right. So that's all. Uh -huh. By doing that, that allows you to work. I mean, or submit bids in that state. for for that city, the county, that state, or that federal agency, depending on the certification and the agency you want to have. But you could use it all. It all under federal. Nope. No. Mm -mm. Federal only applies to federal agencies. Okay, that's right. <coughs> I mean federal contracts for those states. Different. Yes. Yeah. If you have a federal, you can do federal right. contracts for all right. states, right. even international. Right. You know? Right. That's what I mean. Yes. 
CONUS and OCONUS. What does CONUS and OCONUS stand for? CONUS? Yeah. Overseas? What is related to overseas? Outside continental USA. US. And CONUS is just continental US. So if you see a bit a project that says OCONUS, that means it's international. Well, outside of the US, you have to plan for travel, you have to plan on hiring non-US vet, I mean non-US citizen maybe, or you have to take your workers here overseas, the cost is more. So just because it's a project that you can do and it says OCONUS on there, keep that in mind. Like translators, they need the Department of State and the DOD uses a lot of translators. The last translation contract I saw was seven billion dollars. Seven billion? For translation services, interpreters. I saw one that was uh, an OCONUS for Panama. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just afraid of those still. You just what? You're afraid of those? Yeah, because I've never done business outside of the US. Yeah, start, say, yeah. Yeah, start yeah. local. Start small, yeah. Start small, yeah. Start small take little steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's all we have for tonight. We're going to do deep dive tonight, and we're going to be talking about marketing and promotion. So I'll see you guys over there. Yes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>